Got another question for the alkenes and addition polymers topic. So this one focuses on nomenclature, electrophilic addition, some definitions, isomerism, unfamiliar reactions, and an unfamiliar mechanism. And as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so make a start. So you can see I've already numbered the carbons up. So the longest continuous chain is this one here. So there's six carbons in that. So this is going to be hex. The carbon-carbon double bond starts at carbon two. So it's a hex hexatoene. There's a methyl group on carbon number three. So it's three methyl hex hexatoene. Moving on to the mechanism, so we'll put the dipole on the bromine molecule, so it's delta positive closest to the double bond, delta negative furthest away. So we'll take a curly arrow from the middle of the carbon-carbon double bond onto that delta positive bromine, and then another curly arrow to show the repulsion of the pair of electrons from the BRBR bond onto that bottom bromine. So there's the carbocation. The bromine can either go on this carbon or this one. Obviously I'll put it on the left hand one, which means a positive charge on this carbon here. Could be the other way around. And when this bromine breaks off here, it's a Br minus ion. So I'm showing that lone pair of electrons so that I can take a curly arrow from the lone pair and I'm gonna to bond to that carbon with the positive charge, which gives us that product there. Moving on to part B, so a couple of definitions. So structural isomers have the same molecular formula, but different structural formula. And stereoisomers have the same structural formula, but different spatial arrangements of atoms or groups. So moving on now to the structures of the isomers, starting with B, we told it can show cis trans, but it can't show optical. So the fact that it can show cis trans means that it's got to have an identical group or atom on each of the carbons of the double bond. So you can see I've gone for hydrogens here. So you can see they're on the same side of the double bond on that one, so that's cis, whereas they're on diagonally opposite sides, um, so that's the trans. It can't show optical, which means that we can't have a chiral center. So you can see on this carbon here, I've got an ident two identical groups, two methyl groups. So we haven't got four different groups on this carbon, and so therefore it can't show optical. Another possible structure is this one here. So I've gone for methyl groups now being the identical group. So again, you can see same side, cis, diagonally opposite sides of the double bond, trans, and there's no optical isomers possible here because we don't have a chiral carbon. And moving on to compound C, remember this one can show optical but can't show cis trans. So now we do need a chiral center. So I've got one there. Um, it can't show cis trans. So I've got to have an identical um, atom or group of atoms, atoms in this case, on one of the carbons of the double bond. So all I need to do now is show this in 3D and do the mirror image here. So remember, we just draw a tetrahedral arrangement around the chiral center, and it doesn't matter which order you put your groups on, on the first one, so long as you do the mirror image of what you've drawn on the left, on the right. So moving on to the next part, hope you can still see everything. I've just zoomed out a little bit. So we've got um, no peak between 1620 and 1680 for D, so it doesn't have a carbon-carbon double bond, whereas E does. So D must be this, cyclohexane, and that's what I would write there. So there's my information about the lack of a carbon-carbon double bond. And the hydrogens are all equivalent, and so are all the carbons. Moving up to compound E, it does have a carbon-carbon double bond, and all the hydrogens are equivalent. Two types of carbon, you've got the carbons in the double bond as one type, You've got the carbons of the CH3s as a second type of carbon. Moving on to part C, so this is the unfamiliar stuff. So we've got some information about ozonolysis. So I've already written a zigzag line there through that carbon-carbon double bond. So you can see um, when the carbon-carbon double bond breaks, basically we just put um, a carbonyl group onto this carbon here and the other one as well. And whatever is already bonded to the carbon stays there. Okay, so we'll just do the same with the others. 
So there's the first one. Second one's a bit nasty because it's just one single compound because we've started with the ring and it's just opened up. So just follow this round. So obviously there's a carbon oxygen double bond here. So it's up there. CH3 there. And then we've got CH2, 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 CH2. And when we get to this carbon here, it's that one there, we've got a hydrogen and a CH3, hydrogen and CH3. And then that goes up to the carbon of the, of the C double bond O. You see there's a hydrogen there. So that was that one. And the very last question, so there's the answer there. I'll just quickly explain. So basically, this pair of electrons in the pi bond is going to connect this carbon to this oxygen. So that's our pair of electrons there. That bounces the electrons onto the O plus in this pi bond. So that becomes a single bond there. And we lose the positive charge. We've already got this single bond here. But the pair of electrons on that O minus is going to connect to this carbon here. So that's that there. There's no overall charge on the product, and that's because there's no overall charge here. We've got a plus cancelled out by that minus.